Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper represents the maximum peak of the technique reached during the Italian Renaissance, but this is not only a work of incredible value, according to many. It hides secret messages within itself. He see the disciple called John or Mary Magdalene. What are the new symbols behind this fresco? All of this will be explained in this episode. The background. Before we dive into the painting itself, let's discuss some background information. The Last Supper is a mural painting by the Italian High Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci, dated 1495-1498. The painting represents the scene of the Last Supper of Jesus with the Twelve Apostles, specifically the moment after Jesus announces that one of his apostles will betray him. The work was commissioned as part of a plan of renovations to the church and its convent buildings by Leonardo's patron, Ludovico Sforza, Duke of Milan. The fresco covers an end wall of the dining hall at the monastery of Santa Maria delle Grazie in Milan, Italy. The subjects. All 12 apostles have different reaction to the news, with various degrees of anger and shock. From left to right, according to the apostles' head, we have Bartholomew, James, son of Alphus, and Andrew. All are surprised. Judas Iscariot, Peter, and John form another group of three. Judas is wearing red, blue, and green, and is in shadow, looking withdrawn and taken aback by the sudden revelation of his plan. He is clutching a small bag, perhaps signifying the silver given to him as a payment to betray Jesus. He is also tipping over the salt cellar, which may be related to the Near Eastern expression to betray the salt, meaning to betray one's master. He is the only person to have his elbow on the table, and his head is also vertically the lowest of anyone in the painting. Peter wears an expression of anger and appears to be holding a knife. He is leaning towards John and touching him on the shoulder. The youngest apostle, John, appears to be faint and leans toward Peter. Jesus. Thomas, James the Greater and Philip are the next group of three. Thomas is clearly upset. The raised index finger foreshadows his incredulity of the resurrection. James the Greater looks stunned, with his arm in the air. Meanwhile, Philip appeared to be requesting some explanation. Matthew, Judas, and Simon the Zealot are the final group of three. Both Thaddeus and Matthew are turned toward Simon, perhaps to find out if he has any answer to their initial questions. In common with other depiction of the Last Supper from this period, Leonardo seats the diners on one side of the table so that none of them has his back to the viewer. The angles and lighting draw attention to Jesus. The painting demonstrated Da Vinci's masterful use of perspective, as it draws our attention to the face of Christ at the center of the composition. And Christ's face, through his downturned gaze, directs our focus along the diagonal of his left arm to his hand and therefore the bread. Damage. Before Leonardo, as a painter, favored oil painting, a medium that allows the artist to work slowly and make changes with ease. Fresco painting does not facilitate either of these objectives. Rather than using the proven method of painting on walls, because of the method used, soon after the painting was completed, in 1498, it began to deteriorate. The technique used to paint the fresco was not the best, plus the place chosen was wrong due to the humidity conditions. Furthermore, over the centuries, various historical facts have had relevance in ruining the work even more. In 1796, French revolutionary anti-clerical troops used the refectory as an armory and stable. Goethe wrote that in 1800, the room was flooded with half a meter of water after a heavy storm. The refectory was used as a prison, it is not known whether any of the prisoners may have damaged the painting. During World War II, on 1943, the refectory was struck by Allied bombing. Protective sandbagging prevented the painting from being struck by bomb splinters, but it may have been damaged by the vibration. Restoration The painting's appearance by the late 1970s had badly deteriorated. From 1978 to 1999, Pinin Rambilla guided a major restoration project to stabilize the painting and reverse the damage caused by dirt and pollution. 
Since it had proven impractical to move the painting to a more controlled environment, the refectory was instead converted to a sealed climate control environment, which meant bricking up the windows. Then, a detailed study was undertaken to determine the painting's original form, using scientific tests and original cartoons preserved by the Royal Library at the Windsor Castle. This restoration took 21 years, and on 28th May 1999, the painting was returned to display, hidden symbols. Numbers proliferate within the Last Supper, particularly the numbers 3 and 4 and their mathematical multiples. The apostles are arranged in four sets of three. There are four sets of tapestries on each wall, with three spaces between them. The central back wall has three open windows, framed by four structural supports. There are six rows of coffers that hover over the twelve apostles. Symbolically, the number three traditionally represents divinity, holiness, the heavenly realm. It takes three sides to make a complete triangle which is the minimum number of lines needed to create a closed geometric hole. Indeed, Jesus Christ is formed within the shape of a triangle in the painting. These ideas became manifested in Christian catechism as the Trinity. On the other hand, the number four connotes the earth as understood as finite space. The four cardinal direction and the four terminal sides of a square underscore the number's equation to earthly being. In terms of the painting, what does the overwhelming use of numbers signify within this symbolically saturated scene? Quite possibly the nature of God and how a man can know and communicate with him. According to Italian musician Giovanni Maria Pala, Da Vinci incorporated musical notes in The Last Supper. If we look at the painting, especially the tablecloth, it is possible to draw horizontal lines. These imaginary lines hit the pieces of bread on the tablecloth, just as if they were notes. If we draw a line on the characters in the scene, we see that the hands also represent notes. So, after finding these reference points, we understand that Leonardo traced notes that can be played by an organ. The melody completes the work and gives a dramatic sense. Immediately to Jesus' right, there is a swooning, long-haired, androgynous figure whose downcast eyes and expression of ineffable sadness mirror that of Jesus himself. Officially, this is Saint John, the youngest apostle, and commonly referred to as the disciple who Jesus loved. But is this delicate figure really Saint John? For many scholars, the person Leonardo sat at Jesus' right hand was not John, or indeed any other man, but rather Mary Magdalene one of Christ's few female followers, and the only one of his disciples who would be present at both his crucifixion and burial, as well as being the first to witness his resurrection. She was the disciple who Jesus loved. Between the figure of Christ and the alleged Mary Magdalene, we see a shape, the V. This symbolizes the belly of a woman. Why would Leonardo not only include her in his masterpiece, but also place her at the most exalted position at the table? Whether Jesus and Mary Magdalene's unusually close relationship culminated in marriage and even children remains unproven, but given that Leonardo was also an exceptional scholar and that Mary was the patron of the Dominican order for whom the mural was painted in the first place, it is by no means unthinkable that whether out of theological precocity loyalty to the order who commissioned him, or just plain mischief, he would include her in his depiction of the Apostles' moment of crisis, and that, of them all, the one who best understood Jesus' teachings should be the only one among them not to react with fear, shock, or disbelief. Also, if you want to support the project, in my online store, I sell wall art of famous paintings, including that of The Last Supper. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video.